Galatians 5.16, I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So, if we walk by the Spirit, will we gratify the desires of the flesh? If we walk by the Spirit, will we sin? Because all sin is basically gratifying the desires of the flesh. And if I walk by the Spirit, I won't do it. He seems to be implying that if I walk that way, I won't sin. Let's hit another one. Okay, how could, how could all these scriptures sound like they're all saying the same thing? Because they are saying the same thing. But he needs to go to the next verse here. You can't read verse 16 by itself. Okay, it should come after verse 17 or we, what we do is we take ver the knowledge of verse 16 into the next verse with it. Okay, he gives us this information first because what he's about to tell us is that there's a war and you, you have to make a choice. And what he's saying in this verse, first verse is that you can walk in the spirit. The command is to walk in the Spirit. The teaching of God in Christ is to walk in the Spirit. And what happens? What, what happens? Well, let's read the next verse. It says, because the flesh is against the Spirit. Because they're fighting, because the flesh is opposite, contrary to the Spirit, that if you walk in the Spirit, take verse 16 with you into reading verse 17. You have to take verse 16 into verse 17 and hold on to what verse 16 is really saying walk in the spirit why because look what it says down at the bottom you cannot do the things that you would meaning that if you walk in the spirit you cannot do the things of the flesh cannot keep sinning can i get an amen you have to take both verses bring them together in understanding can i get an amen if you see how that works what Paul is saying here is these two things. If you only read verse 17, you're going to take away that there's a, they're just simply a conflict with me. How many of you know that if you read verse 17 by itself, you'll just simply walk away with this scratching your head, yeah, there's a big battle in me. There's nothing I can do about it. Verse 16 is what you can do about it. Walk in the Spirit because there's this battle in you. You can walk in the Spirit and when you walk in the Spirit, you won't be able to do the things that the flesh wants to do because they're battling each other. And as long as you're in the Spirit, you will not do, look, cannot do the things that you would do, right? Because they cannot control, they both can't control you. They both can't control you. And there's a battle to control you. And it's amazing that, you know, Sometimes the Holy Spirit controls me and I'm, I, when I'm under the control of the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for me to sin. And have you ever experienced that in your life? If you have and you recognize that moment, but then you see sin again, you have to understand that in that sinful spirit that hasn't been 100% crucified yet, where the potential to sin still exists, when you let it, and when you come under that sinful spirit, that very moment and time period that you're sinning, guess what? You cannot do a righteous activity. You cannot. It has to be crucified. And so there's times when you're in that spirit of flesh, and as much as you might want to have not done that, you did it anyway. And so there is this you cannot do thing. This, this concept of you cannot do the thing that you would is put there on both sides. That's why verse 17 is applying it to both. Can I get an amen if you understand that you cannot do the thing that you would applies to both. If you're in the spirit, walking in the spirit, then you cannot, then you cannot do the thing the flesh wants to do. But if you're walking in the flesh, then you cannot do the thing the spirit wants to do. And that's what this is talking about. All right? So he says, solve that problem by walking in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So that's the big command. That's the impossible thing that we believe in. Right? Because it's so... The, what, what's happened here is holiness has become an impossibility in the churches. Living holy and righteous has become an impossible thing. It's been, it's taught as an impossible thing. All right? It's taught as something impossible to do. So 
we doubt that it can be done. But all of these scriptures that he's pointing to clearly say that it is possible and it can be done. And that's what they sound like they're saying because that's what they are saying. 